I have several SPD tech friends who make at or above $90,000 a year. <laughs> Hey Sterile Processing Professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about money. Nobody works for free, and we all got bills to pay, and we all got toys we wanna save up for. I see a lot of questions out there about how much do sterile processing techs make, or can I make more money if I do traveling tech? Well, I'm gonna break down the pay scales for you, and I'm also gonna bring up some other information that is really important to consider when you're thinking about pay for this field. First, right off the bat, I have to say that SPD techs do not make the amount of money that you're worth. Plain and simple, period. The industry has made some progress in certain different areas, geographically and whatnot, but nationwide, we still have a long ways to go to not only make this field recognized and respected for the work you do, but also monetized and appreciated financially for the work you do. No matter what, we know everything comes with a catch. Maybe it's a higher paying job at the local hospital, so you go and you move over there, but now you're working nights or weekends and call shifts. Maybe that local outpatient surgery center pays more, but maybe you have to pay more for your insurance and they don't have a 401k. Maybe you do decide to do that traveling tech, but now you find yourself traveling more than you thought you would and having a really hard time finding affordable places to live during those short contracts and either paying too much or living in really dangerous areas. And not every travel agency offers insurance, so you might pay quite a bit out of pocket. When we think about pay, we need to think about a lot more than just the hourly rate. You need to think about insurance, 401k benefits, cell phone discounts depending on the organization, PTO earning, differentials for nights and weekends. You need to think about overtime rates and most importantly, cost of living wherever that job is or wherever you intend to live around that job. All that stuff is really important. I have several SPD tech friends who make at or above $90,000 a year, but the cost of living is horrendous. Yeah, you get more money, but you pay out the butt to survive there too. What they make, is equivalent to as if they worked where I live and they made like 45 or 50,000 a year. Yes, they pay that much in housing and living expenses. Yeah, that salary, that traveling tech salary, that salary in a completely different, um, highly populated urban area might look really good, but if you're not prepared for those high living costs, you're gonna be really surprised when you get there. With all my work and pushing in this field to advance sterile processing and to increase the pay, there is one thing that I have found that works the absolute best. And if you had asked me this seven years ago, I would have never ever said this would be the one thing I think is the best, but honestly, it's unions. When I started as a manager at one of the hospitals close by here, just over six years ago, the starting pay for a sterile processing technician with no experience was only like 15 bucks an hour. With my time and the advocating and the pushing with the executives and the unions, they're now starting techs off, no experience, no experience, no school, no nothing, at about 22 bucks an hour. That's actually pretty good for this area, starting with zero experience. And that doesn't even cover the fact that the union has like three year contracts and they have a pay scale but that pay scale has raises every year of the contract as well. So you not only have your raises every anniversary according to that pay scale, the entire pay scale shifts up each year as well. So you're basically getting double raises every year. And you know what makes it even better? The union in this local area owns the contract for that hospital SPD techs and the leading competitor hospital in the same area. So their contracts are kind of offset so as they raise the pay for SPD techs over here, they use that as leverage to raise the pay for SPD techs over here and back and forth. It is fantastic to watch. I know everyone is not union friendly. I used to not be union friendly as well, but if you actually get involved with your union and you make them work for you, you can have some pretty awesome results. So let's get to the point of the video. How much do SPD techs make? Well, it really depends on where you live. 
I'm going to bounce around a few states and list to you some average median starting pays so that you can kind of have an idea. In Oregon, the starting pay is anywhere around 1850. Like I said, it's gonna be wildly different depending on where you're at. Starting pay at my local hospital is 22 bucks, but for the state average, it's 1850. In California, you could be looking anywhere from 18 to $21 an hour starting pay. In Arizona, about 1750. Minnesota, 1950. Texas, about 17. North Carolina, 1650. I can keep going, but none of these states are any much different than the rest of the states. There's not like this huge gap. The only two states that stick out with a much higher average starting pay, somewhere around $24 an hour, is Alaska and Massachusetts. But, I mean, it's a big decision to go live in Alaska, and if you can live in Massachusetts with that pay and actually afford some place to live, go for it, but it's not likely. So as of right now, understand this, you are not going to get rich in this field. And to get to a comfortable living pay level where you can take care of your family and whatnot, it's gonna take a few years until you get to that point. You're gonna have to put in the time, you're gonna have to put in the work, get certified, set yourself apart, and constantly look to better yourself. There's also other options later on, like working towards a lead tech position or a loaner tech position, supervisor, even manager at some point. The fact is we need to keep advocating for the techs in this field. We need to standardize education. We need to standardize certification across the nation if we want to push and get this field recognized and also have a set standard that everyone follows that brings more power and empowerment to us to demand more money. If you think of other jobs like surgical technician or radiology tech, those have nationwide standards and they also have certifying bodies that are nationwide as well and they're recognized um, by state governments and actually require those certifications to work. Yes, sterile processing has constantly been this entry level way to get in without experience or whatever, but that has started to hurt us in the long run. We have to start treating it like a profession and not as a entry step way into the hospital. That's, I'm sorry, but that's what the cafeteria and stuff like that is for. They are stepping stones. Sterile processing is a professional job that requires a lot of expertise. I will always do whatever I can to advocate for this field and to educate techs, give them the tools to get certified, give them the tools to better themselves, but it's gonna take all of us to constantly push this field forward. You need to get involved with your local chapters and do the work that needs to be done to get everything recognized with this field. In supervisors and managers, you are responsible to advocate for your technicians. Do not sit idly by and watch them overworked, neglected, and underpaid. Get in the game and make your department and your techs known by your executive leadership. And if you're not willing to do that, then resign, step aside, and let someone else do it. I cannot tell you how many times I have put my job on the line for my technicians. And look, I never got fired. I put my job on the line forcefully, but I also did it tactfully. You can call it schmoozing or sucking up to executive leadership, but it doesn't have to be that. And I would actually prefer it isn't that. But there is a way to build relationships with your leadership and also allow them to understand and respect the work that you do. At one point, my department was gonna cut two tech positions. So I actually put in my resignation and said, I'm done. And then they said, why are you done? And I said, if you're gonna cut my tech positions, I cannot just stand by and watch them suffer. So you know what happened? They decided not to cut those positions. Yes, your job is important, your career is important, but as a leader, it is your job to not think selfishly. You have to think about the big picture and whether that department can survive beyond you. Hmm, money, money, money. Hey, any videos or topics you wanna see, put them in the comments down below. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.
Mo.